Hello everyone, hope I'm meeting all of you in the best of health. Um, today's video is a simple um, nighttime routine. Like you see, and let me just um, say this quickly because it's very, 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 very important. I've had questions um, about hyperpigmentation. A lot of people want to know what ingredients is out there for hyperpigmentation. There are loads of ingredients, thousands and maybe even millions of ingredients meant for the treatment of hyperpigmentation. But just because you have so much product out there and some of them are quite very, very, very affordable, doesn't mean that you should jump into them, pack the collection of them, and then begin to use them all at once. No, now that's the mistake that a lot of people battling with hyperpigmentation suffer. Once you hear um, um, azelic acid is good for hyperpigmentation, you run and go and buy. You hear um, retinol is good for hyperpigmentation, you run to go and buy. You hear lactic acid is good for hyperpigmentation, you go. Like all of these ingredients, I have them, even as I'm speaking to you right in front of my table right now, because these are ingredients or treatments I use daily. But I don't use all of them, and that's the reason why I come up with these videos a simple nighttime routine, morning routine, all these routines in order for you to fit in, like find where you fit in. Okay, um, normally, normally, I don't know, um, I'm not really, really battling with hyperpigmentation per se because I've kind of successfully um, worked on my skin to achieve at least an even toned skin but then there's this thing about the fact that even if you have an even skin tone you still need to maintain it now the maintaining can go forward or backward what i mean by forward or backward means that when you're maintaining and you overdo you're going to trigger the sensitivity on the, of the skin and the way the melanocytes are, are, are positioned or they are configured the way god just put them in their um, perfect perspective places is the fact that the moment they feel triggered or they feel attacked they become very very sensitive and they produce more melanin and <laughs> the result of excess melanin leads to hyperpigmentation especially for we skin of color our melanocytes can just go haywire at little triggering and there are so many causes of hyperpigmentation um the most popular ones are um, the, the ones coming from black spots maybe acne spots yes some from some bones some from melasma some from um, hormones like an um, example in pregnancy yeah the whole the neck will get black and every oh, please don't go there i know that feeling um so the first mistake that people make with hyperpigmentation is the fact that they try to lighten those dark areas and in most cases um i don't want to call a huge number that i'm not sure about but in most cases mo uh, people jump into dive into using hydroquinone because hydroquinone at the beginning can be very very deceptive the reason why i use the word very deceptive is the fact that it gives you this um imagination or it gives you this belief which actually i won't say it gives the belief it actually begins that way it, it starts by actually trying to like maybe even out your skin tone you begin to lighten up okay but then one very important product for the treatment of hyperpigmentation is weird but it's true it's your sp and your SPF should be um, an SPF with unit of at least 30. Anything below 30 might not protect your skin. Especially when you're using a very sensitive product like hydroquinone. And hydroquinone is a product that I tell people that I won't ask you not to use it. And I'll still not ask you to use it. But if you fall in the category of people that are comfortable using hydroquinone, then you have to give breaks. If you choose not to use them, good for you now coming back to safer alternatives or better alternatives to hydroquinone those are our tyrosinase inhibitors those are mostly our botanical powders yeah um they're not exfoliants they are botanical powders they can reduce the production of melanin thereby working on your hyperpigmentation and helping you to even out your skin tone but then using tyrosinase inhibitors 
sometimes or most times depending on the nature of the hyperpigmentation might still not be enough okay i'll keep going about hyperpigmentation um but today or uh, yeah i'm trying to show you how to um do a skincare routine using two actives like i said earlier there's a difference between actives and then there are different between um okay yeah let me say there are different between exfoliating actives and then lightening actives she understand which most likely actives they kind of complement or work alongside with our exfoliating actives i don't know if i am very clear here to be understood um when your exfoliating actives does their work then your other um, ingredients especially your tyrosinase inhibitors would also feel comfortable but then you have to still be careful overdoing everything will be bad because when you over exfoliate or when you overuse those um exfoliating acids mm -hmm, they can sensitize the skin and when you wear on your tyrosinase inhibitors instead of them doing completing the work of um clearing hyperpigmentation or even out the skin tone it could worsen the sensitivity of your skin and we don't want that so um i'll come up with a video after this products that you could use for hyperpigmentation but then i'm still just being very careful because i don't want to throw out a lot of products and some people will run and go and buy everything and then they might not be able to use it appropriately to be honest with you layering more than 10 um, ingredients or actives or tyrosinase inhibitors on your skin for me is not necessary just do have a shade do like i said in one of my video i have a shade do for the week mondays i use retinol tuesday i use um, niacinamide wednesday i use um, salicylic acid thursday you get now i can even skip a day or two where i don't even use no actives um, exfoliating actives most of the time no tyrosinase inhibitors i just allow my skin to chill hi yes i just use a lot of lipids ceramides just building you understand and um securing my skin barrier that's it this night this night here i'm going to work with my precious azelic acid um, face cream and um i'm going to use um my night cinnamide you see these two combo they are good for the treatment of hyper pigmentation without wasting too much of your time i'm going to go in with my hydrating serum the reason why i'm going in with my hydrating serum is because um azelic acid can be very very irritating like <laughs> it can like when i say stink <laughs> your skin exactly yeah um this azelic acid is at 10 percent this azelic acid cream uh is formulated at 10 percent azelic acid so my hydrating serum has gone on the skin let me just find this a little bit so that you can just this fast or oh, will i say be absorbed faster into my skin that doesn't need to absorb completely though but just to a little bit hold on to the skin first before i go in it's actually um water based that's the thing so and um everything i'm using here today is actually even water soluble so everything will still sit in and penetrate now this is my um niacinamide i know one thing we use using niacinamide is that number one <laughs> less is more with niacinamide one then number two again patience you see anything that's under very important thing. you see people that have badly hyperpigmentation as well those that are battling which is normal obviously it has to do with you looking at yourself in the mirror and you're not happy with what you see but you see that hurry hurry some who want it to just be done it don't deal no 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 it won't work that way you need to give it time your skin has life do you understand so you cannot skyrocket it from zero to one thousand no it doesn't work that way you need to give it time 
you need to be patient like i tell uh, most of my clients especially those i'm treating for hyperpigmentation i try to give a very long waiting time so that they don't get impatient i tell you that you begin to see results from at least three to four months which in reality you could begin to see results if you have a very like very sensitive skin there's people that have skins that kind of just pick up very fast you could begin to see results for even as low as let's say two to four weeks depending on the type of skin that you have but at least from um eight to twelve weeks you would see visible results no matter how stubborn your skin is you understand i'm just trying to um my skin let has absorbed um the serums so it's time to go in what my azaleic acid now this is how it looks like this is what it looks like yeah this is it can you see it's a lotion like kind of consistency so now all of this is like i said earlier again um is the fact that during the day you need to use your sp it's very very important because with all of this hard work and you don't protect yourself from the sun you don't use a good mineral spf with um mm -hmm. zinc dioxide sorry with um i don't know why i'm always putting that dye zinc does not have a dye is a single bond with a zinc oxide and titanium dioxide those two combo in your sunscreen is going to give your sunscreen a broad spectrum characteristics which means it's going to protect your skin from the uvas and the uvbs and even the uvcs you know that kind of thing so um putting in all of this effort without protecting yourself from the sun honestly speaking might just be a waste in some um, cases in some ingredients especially an ingredient like your lactic acid um it might even end up giving you darker pigmentation like you're trying to it might give you worse than what you already have so um spf is very very important i have clients that sometimes they're like okay i want to get this acid down to get that i'm like <laughs> you're getting it with an spf because if you don't get it with an spf your efforts will all go in vain yes so when you're treating hyperpigmentation make sure you position your mind maybe you even buy your sunscreen first before you even start buying the ingredients for treatment of hyperpigmentation so that you know the more you go under the sun the more melanin you produce so if you start using your spf your production of melanin automatically will even drop which means you're already giving room for um I picked this thing up a little bit too so much. But I'll try and massage it into the skin. Yeah, I took a lot. <laughs> yeah. You get round the neck, down the chest as well, every of these areas. And as I told you, azolic acid has this very stinky feeling. But then with time you get used to it, your skin when you get your skin gets used to it, it's not going to be that uncomfortable. Well, honestly speaking as a look acid is an awesome ingredient that is even suitable for use during pregnancy how good is that and it helps with acne it also helps with rosacea it lightens the skin it in fact it just works on oh and it has antibacterial properties it even has um um anti-oxidizing properties so which means it can help uh, protect the skin from free radicals that is a very similar characteristics of um, vitamin C you understand help to mop out free radicals from the skin now azelic acid all, all has all of those property so how wonderful and it's very mild very important it doesn't have any peeling effect it's very very mild mm-hmm can you see I've successfully massaged it into the skin I just took in, I took a little bit excess, it's too much, yeah, he went a little bit overboard, so a little goes a very long way, mm-hmm, so, now I'm going to let it in, sit for a, a little bit as well in, into the skin, then I'll go over it with my face cream, and that face cream has no active in it, do you understand, like, 
what I mean by it has no activity in it is not an exfoliating face cream, it's not a lightening face cream, it's just a moisturizer. Do you understand? It's okay to still use a face cream that contains any tyros in it and he beat up. Yes, it, it's okay, it's okay to go into face cream that has maybe alpha abutin in it, has um um koji in it. Yeah, you could still go in that kind of thing, yeah, to boost your um skin condition to help improve the hyperpigmentation so what i'm trying to say basically is that azelic acid um works well with tyrosinase inhibitors do you understand they work they coexist they can collaborate to give you a brighter skin so i'm just going to sit with it for like five minutes uh when i sit with it for like five minutes then i now go in with my moisturizer so basically that is it and um thank you so much and hope to see you in another video bye